I'm doing well so far. Can I just put in a one, two, three so that I know that you, you guys are perfectly doing, doing well? Okay, and I, just to make sure that you guys are here, can I just type in a one, two, three in the chat group? All right, so we'll be using the chat group quite often so that this is going to be a two-way conversation, you know, uh, because you guys ca can't really uh, use the video, video feature. So we'll be using a lot of the chat group. Okay, good to see you. Oh, Devin, good to see you. <laughs> so later, yeah, do keep, do keep your question coming. Okay, I, I'll remember your question. Yeah, but anyway, the whole thing about this series is basically, at the end of the day, I will share with you guys my view, whether do I want to buy it? Okay, that means buy the share, or do I not want to buy it? So I think that's also going to be some of the highlight. Uh, but of course, again, later I'll have my disclaimer that, you know, <laughs> Please do not just simply follow me. Please do your own due diligence. Huh? Okay, we'll be starting in the one minute time. We'll be starting in one minute time on the dot. So I promise uh, we'll keep everything short and sweet. We end it about around 45 minutes. I try to do it around 45 minutes, uh, less than an hour. So I'll be, let me just put on Facebook Live as well, on my Facebook as well. Okay, good. I think I'm live on Facebook. Okay. Okay, good. Okay, let's get started. Let's get started. Let me allow me to just share my screen. Okay, and if, if you're able to actually see my screen, can you just type in uh, 888 in the chat group? Can you just type in 888 in the chat group? If you can see my screen. Okay, that's great, that's great. You are able to see my screen, so let's get started right now. Okay, so thanks everyone for coming once again. So welcome to today's Buy or Buy series. Okay, hi, my name is Bowen. I'm the co-founder of Ultimate Investing, and today I'm going to present to you guys this company called Sheng Xiong supermarket this is a singapore listed company and of course uh one of the favorite quote by xing xiong as you can see on the, on the bottom left is Chen Su Wei Le Ni, okay everything is for you so if today we don't go and support them uh, it's also not that good uh, because they do everything for us so let's see whether are they actually keeping to this uh vision of them whereby everything is for the audience or for the for all of us all right, and of course, before I start, I just want to put on a disclaimer slide. Uh, again, very important that this is not a recommendation to buy or sell, and it's purely for education purpose only. Uh, so do do your own due uh, diligence, do your own uh, financial check, and do your own research. Again, that we will not be liable in respect of any damage, expense, or loss arising from such information. So with this uh, in place, okay, I am more than happy to actually share my, share my findings openly. So let me just start with the background of Sheng Xiong, okay? The background of Sheng Xiong. So very interesting, we can see from this headline, uh, you mentioned that this is the Sheng Xiong story from selling pork in Ang Mo Kyo to becoming a millionaire. And that was actually posted on 2016. So on my left on the picture is one of the co-founder of Sheng Xiong, okay? So Sheng Xiong actually consists of three brothers. All right, so three brothers. So uh, Lim Hock Chi is actually ca the current CEO and also one of the brothers, like one of the founder of Sheng Xiong. So just to share with you guys the latest figure of Sheng Xiong, currently they have 61 supermarket uh, in Singapore. Okay, 61 supermarket in Singapore. They have two supermarket in China as well. All right, so if you include the total amount is 63 stores, uh, revenue is 991 million, net income is 76 million, and they have over 2,300 employees. And on the left, you can see that is one of, that is their HQ. And basically, uh, everything that you buy, every vegetables, every fruits, uh, every ingredients will have to, will have to go through uh, that particular place, which is actually over at Mandai. Right. And to share with you guys some of the milestones of uh, Sheng Xiong. You can see that it was actually first uh, started as a very, very small uh, supermarket in 1985 in Ang Mo Kyo. 
All right. So subsequently, in about three years, they actually opened up another supermarket. So that was in 1988. So of course, uh, they, they, they grow in a very uh, stable and, and, and sustainable manner. All the way until 2011, okay, 2011, they actually got listed uh, in the Singapore Stock Exchange. And of course, a lot of us, we actually know this company because we actually watch the show, okay, the Sheng Xiong show. So quite a number of us might be familiar with the Pai Pei, Pai Pei, you know, uh, 100 times, 100 times a reward. So it has been ongoing since 2007. And even up to right now, this show is actually still uh, ongoing except during this period whereby we are not able to actually uh, do it. But other than that, you can see that this Sheng Shong show has been one of the key uh, ways for the company to actually interact with all of us, all right, to let us know that, hey, this brand is actually out there. And yeah, of course, in 2011, they actually got listed on the Singapore Stock Exchange. So these are some of the key milestones. So this was actually extracted from the uh, IPO, during IPO, they started with 22 supermarkets, one hypermarket, which is at Little India, the Verf. And they actually started with three uh, wet market stores. So total, they had 26 supermarkets uh, when they actually IPO in 2011. So we can see that the growth they had uh, since 2011, right now, as I mentioned, they had 61. Okay, including the two China, is actually 63. So from 26 to 63, you know, they have been growing. I would say very, very steadily, okay, over the past uh, nine years. So here's are some of the competitive strengths of uh, Xing Xiong. I'm sure that we are all familiar with this brand uh, because in Singapore, uh, we look at the three largest supermarkets. Of course, we have NTUC uh, and of course, we have uh, Dairy Farm. Dairy Farm, which actually owns Cold Storage as well as uh, this is uh, Giant. All right, used to, Giant used to, actually took over shop and safe. So in the past, it's actually under shop and safe, but now it's all under giant. So these are some of the key uh, competitors, okay, in Singapore in terms of the grocery uh, market. But how does Sheng Xiong differentiate itself? Okay, they actually say that they actually want to offer a quality products at competitive prices. So that one, I let you all decide whether do they actually offer uh, quality products at competitive prices. So maybe I just chat with you guys because you guys are actually the consumer. Uh, some of you guys might, might, might go to different supermarket. So I just want to ask you guys, uh, if given a choice, let's say today you move to a new place and at your doorstep, okay, maybe just, 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 just below your house, there is these three supermarket, Giant, Sheng Xiong, and NTUC, side by side, all within the same distance. Okay, which one would you actually go for? If you go for Sheng Xiong, can you just type SS? If you go for Giant, just type a G. And if you go for NTUC, just type the four letter NTUC. Okay, do let me know uh, which supermarket would you actually go for if, okay, assuming that the price are competitive. Uh, all right, which one would be your preferred choice? Let me see. Very interesting. Uh. So I have uh, on Zoom NTUC, NTUC, NTUC. Sheng Xiong, NTUC, Sheng Xiong, NTUC, 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 Giant, NTUC, Sheng Xiong, NTUC, Sheng Xiong, Sheng Xiong, Sheng Xiong, NTUC. Okay, so for those of you who are on Facebook, uh, you can also just put in in the chat group. I'll be able to see them as well. Okay, cool. I think that most of the people actually still choose NTUC. Okay, slightly more, slightly more. But I would say that there's about 30 to 30 over percent of you guys actually choose Sheng Xiong or 30 to 40 percent. And of course, Giant is almost uh, about 10 percent or less than 10 percent. Okay, I think that is a very, very good insights for, 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 for me as well. Okay, and of course, for us, whether do we want to invest in this company called Sheng Xiong. Then next, of course, we look at what they mentioned uh, that. That is their strength. They say that they have key management, dedicated key management personnel with extensive experience. Uh, of course, when they say extensive experience, it's actually through their 30 over years of uh, operating in the supermarket. So right now, the three brothers, okay, uh, three Mr. Lim, lah, okay, the three founders, uh, they are all still actually within the company. They are all still within the company. So they are all very, very hands-on. Uh, and of course, they actually... Uh, continue to grow the business based on their experience of the grocery retailing industry. 
And of course, the third one is they, 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 they actually share that they offer quality product at competitive price. So this one, again, I am not too sure, okay, because I think it's very, very subjective. So if you agree with this sentence, right, that Sheng Shong offer quality product at competitive price, can you just put in a 111 if you agree with this sentence? If you don't really agree, you can just put 000. Okay, I repeat that. Uh, if you agree that Sheng Shong offer quality product at competitive price, put 111. If you don't agree, put 000. Let me just see. Uh, Okay, very interesting. I see zero 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 zero. Okay, wow, almost half of the people said zero zero zero. I think yeah, cheap but not very quality. Okay, same same for those who are on Facebook. Please please do share also. Yeah, um, uh, I also want to hear from you guys. All right, so someone actually mentioned that Sheng Shang is cheap but not very quality. Interesting. Okay. Zero, zero, zero. Wow. Seems like a lot of people don't kind of agree that Sheng Shang offer quality product at competitive uh, prices. Yeah. Uh, and hopefully, you know, we are able to invite the, the, the founder of Sheng Shang to actually join us one day. Uh, so that I think they are, they, are, they are more than happy to actually hear on the ground, you know, what is going on and why people actually had this kind of, I would say that, wow, 50, 50%. Uh, I was expecting like maybe 20% of you guys say that no, don't agree, but it seems like almost 50% of the people actually don't agree. So again, that's something that is very, very interesting over here. And of course, the last one, okay, they want to establish relationship with suppliers and contract manufacturer, and that is their competitive strength. I think definitely I agree because as a supermarket, one of the things that they have to have is the economy of skill to be able to source for a good product, okay, a fresh product, and at the same time, very, very competitive price. So they need to actually have like, like what they mentioned over here, a large network of supplier, you know, and manufacturer. So that is what they say that they have, like, because this is what, uh, these are all extracted from the uh, annual report of Cheng Xiong. So moving on, okay, let's just dive in direct into the financial of this company first, before I actually share a little bit more uh, interesting stuff about this company. So remember the last time we shared about that, we want to look at, a company based on these seven financial check. Number one, growing revenue. That means the company must make more and more, collect more and more money year after year. I think that makes a lot of sense. And the second one is that the net profit must also be positive. So when I sell more vegetable, end of the day, after minusing all my, after paying my staff and everything, I should also collect more money. I should also earn more money. So that is what we meant by positive earnings per share. And the last one, okay. Growing free cash flow. Basically, we talk about your cash flow, because in the supermarket industry, you know, uh, sometimes they have to they have to actually buy over certain shop lot that uses a lot of capital. So later we can also see how actually Sheng Shang actually grow. Do they actually lease the uh, space or do they actually buy over some of the spaces? So uh, we want to make sure that they actually maintain a healthy cash flow. I think that is something that we are looking at over here. A healthy cash flow. And the return on equity, whereby we talk about how the management actually uses the uh, uh, equity. Then the net margin and interest coverage, whereby we look at the debt. Is this, uh, does Xing Xiong have a lot of debt? Okay, because in current market, whereby if let's say a company has a lot of debt, it's actually quite dangerous. So that's something that we want to look at also. And of course, for the last one, we look at dividend yield. So we do know that a lot of Singaporeans, we love to invest in stock market, stock especially in Singapore because they give dividend and dividend is just like our, our bonus, our annual bonus. So we want to make sure that we invest in a company that gives us relatively decent uh, dividend yield. So the last time when I actually did another company on Zoom, I mentioned that I'm looking at PEG less than two, but in the case of Sheng Xiong, I actually changed that to dividend yield more than 5%. So for those of you who are watching, who has watched the other series, okay, this is something for you guys to take note. So I just want to use a graphical to actually share with you guys. So let's say Sheng Xiong, they actually sell more vegetables, they sell more fish, they sell more rice. What happens is that the sales will actually go up. So when the sales go up, the profit should also go up as a company. And when the company profit goes up, what happens is that your bank account should also increase. And that is where we talk about the cash flow. The next thing we want to look at is how the management uses the capital to make money. Okay, how efficient is it? So that's where we look at the efficiency. And of course, from the sales to the profit, 
we look at the profitability, okay? And later on, we're going to touch on a lot on the profitability as well as the efficiency. And of course, for the last one is, does this company has the ability to pay off the debt? So this is an overall view on how we can look at uh, most company, I would say, okay, uh, in Singapore or even in the United States as well. So this is Sheng Xiong, okay? Sheng Xiong revenue is 991 million. The net profit is 76 million. So this is how much they make, okay, after... Uh, minusing the cost of all the vegetable after minusing. So, uh, from an employee perspective, okay, from an employee perspective, uh, this is like your salary. So, your salary on a yearly basis is 76 million. So, Sheng Xiong, end of the day, what the company earned is 76 million. Right, so we can see that, okay, whatever they have that goes into their bank account, okay, after minusing some of the upgrade because they need to upgrade some of their stores, they need to upgrade. They need to actually uh, buy over some of the shop lot. So the cash flow at the end of the day is 64 million, which is still a very, very healthy amount. Next, their equity is 315 million. So using 300 million, they are able to make 76 million every year. So it gives them a return on equity of 25.1%. So if you refer back to my previous example, anything above 15% is good. And so based on that, we can see that Sheng Xiong has done exceptionally well. The management is very, very efficient. So 25% return on equity is very fantastic figure. And of course, net margin. Okay, we are looking at more than 10%, but we can see in the case of Sheng Xiong, their net margin is actually 7.6%. 7.6%. So um, this is something that they can definitely improve on. And of course, if you look at the debt of Sheng Xiong, okay, uh, why I really love this company is because although they actually own a lot of uh, a chain of supermarket, but you can see that they have totally zero debt. So from the management point of view, the management are people who are very, very conservative. When they grow the business, they want to grow it in a very conservative way. And we can actually see that like, from how they actually grew over uh, the number of years. So zero debt. So to summarize the financial, okay, to summarize the financial, I actually put a pass and a fail. Lah. So the first one, growing revenue over the past few years, definitely a pass. Earnings per share, they have been making more and more money as well. So it's a pass as well. We look at the cash flow, is it healthy? Is it growing? Yes. So it's a pass. Return on equity, like I mentioned, it is 20 over percent. Okay, so again, it's a pass. Net margin more than 10%, unfortunately for this, for Sheng Xiong, it is a fail at 7.64% at interest coverage because they have totally zero debt. So we can see that definitely it is a pass as well. And the last one is dividend U. Okay, dividend U. Right now, if you invest in Sheng Xiong based on current share price of $1.50, around $1.50, you will be getting a dividend U of 2.32%. Okay, 2.32%. So some of you guys might feel that, hey, this is not bad. I mean, it's better than putting my money in the bank uh, because my bank is not giving me uh, maybe not even 1% interest. You know, but for us, we have a minimum of 5% and I'm going to actually stick to this 5% uh, even for, the, for this case. So it's a fail because it's less than 5%. So that is for the financial. Okay, so again, just to show you guys based on some graphical uh, illustration, you can see that the revenue has been growing steadily year after year, okay? What I actually did when I actually prepared this report is I actually read the annual report uh, from 2011 all the way until 2019. So every single annual report, I actually can read it. And I can actually see how they actually improve year after year, okay? Every year, they improve their revenue by about 10% or sometimes slightly more than 10%. But amazing, it's really amazing to see a company that is so big, but yet at the same time, they are just constantly growing steadily, you know, at a very, very comfortable pace. Ah, so that is for the revenue. We can even see from their margin, okay, that we talk about margin on how they actually make their business more efficient. So again, it comes to this. When a company becomes larger and larger, there are times whereby the company becomes less and less efficient because they are just focused on growth, they're just focused on, hey, we want, to, we want to become bigger. We want to have more stocks. But no, in the case of Sheng Xiong, even though that they are expanding their business, they are opening up more supermarket, but the management is very, very focused on making sure that, hey, even though we are opening more outlets, 
we want to make sure that we are more and more efficient in terms of how we actually use every single dollar. So we can see that from their profit margin uh, in this particular case, they has been improving year after year, okay? So this is something that the management is focusing a lot on, how to be better every single year, how to make ourselves more efficient every single year. So now, very interesting. A lot of people will be focusing because they'll be thinking like, oh, I mean, Sheng Xiong in Singapore, they, had, they are now like 61 stores. So almost, I would say that uh, many places already have Sheng Xiong. So there is a limited uh, number of stores that they can actually grow to. Okay, uh, maybe they can still grow to about 80 or even 100 plus, but it, if you ask me, will Sheng Xiong become like two, 300? Uh, there is a limit, uh, definitely. Of course, if you compare it to, for example, uh, US company or China company, they can have thousands or even 10,000. Uh, so the growth can be huge. But in Singapore, uh, 61, I think is already quite substantial. Okay, quite substantial. So this is something that we want to look at because Sheng Xiong is going into China and it started in 2014, whereby they had a joint venture with this uh, group called Lu Chen Group to operate supermarket in Kunming. So they had a 60% stake and they actually uh, put in about $6 million. All right, $6 million. So that was in 2014. So we can see that it took some uh, time to, to, to get everything started. And in 2016, finally, the license to operate the supermarket was obtained and they actually went into a lease of 54,000 square feet, okay, which is huge, which is huge. Uh, just to share with you, on average, Singapore Xingxiong, average uh, size is about 9,000 square feet. And average uh, Xingxiong supermarket size is about 9,000. So which means that this is about five times of a normal Xingxiong supermarket in Singapore. It's about five times. But again, we know that because this is in China, so everything in China is larger. Okay, uh, so 50,000 that is in China. That is in 2016. Then in 2017, okay, after getting the license, finally it's open in 2017, November. And 2018, after operating for about one year, okay, the store actually had a loss of 700,000. So out of this 700,000, uh, because they only had 60% uh, share, so their loss is actually 400,000. Uh, so that was in 2018. And subsequently in 2019, okay, the second store actually opened. Okay, so second store opened in 2019 in June. Uh, the, the store size is about half of it, so 26,000 square feet. So uh, let me see what's the next one. Yep, so this is for 2020. So based on what the management actually shared, the CEO actually shared, both stores in China have already break even. Okay, that is based on the first quarter, which is just released, I think about one or two weeks back only. Okay, they actually mentioned that both stores in China have already break even, which I think it is a, a, definitely a good news. Okay, because I would say that China is a huge market and if they were to be able to actually go into the China market, uh, it will means that they, has a, they have a huge uh, potential growth over there. But having said that, Okay, we can see that a lot of companies, when they actually move into a country, they actually go in, you know, uh, very quickly, open 10 stores, 20 stores. But in the case of Sheng Xiong, you can see how the management actually uh, grow and how they actually operate. They start with one store, then they run it and make sure that, hey, this store is, 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 is profitable. They make sure that everything is good before they actually open the second store and then they slowly monitor it. So that is how the Sheng Xiong management is actually operating very, very slow and steady kind, uh, which I actually kind of like it also because you won't have a heart attack when you invest in Sheng Xiong because you know that they are just so steady. Okay, they are just so steady. So both stores in China have break even. So I believe that they are actually thinking about uh, maybe even opening more stores okay, in China. right? But again, no news on that yet as of now. Uh, but we will see how it goes uh, from the upcoming uh, report from the management. So one thing we can uh, learn also from for China is that the profit margin in China is actually lower as compared to Singapore because uh, price, what they sell over here and what they sell in China, China selling price is definitely going to be even lower. Right? But uh, what the company is focusing on doing in China is to build up their brand, Okay, to build up their branding. You know, just like in Singapore, we have the Sheng Xiong show. People actually uh, know about Sheng Xiong. Most of us, we know about it. So in China, it is still relatively a new 
new company, a new supermarket. So it takes time uh, for people to actually kind of get to know their branding. Okay, so now we talk about you know, the financials that actually fail. So the net margin for Sheng Shiong is less than uh, 10%. Okay, it's at 7.64%. So let's think about it. How can actually Sheng Shiong improve their profitability and how can they actually convert more revenue into profit? So let's look at this. Huh? Let's focus on what is the highest profit margin items. Okay, I mean, uh, this is, I mean, the title is basically Sheng Shiong can sell higher profit margin items. So what? Do I mean by this? Basically, if you all go to Sheng Xiong, I'm not sure if you all realize it, but Sheng Xiong actually have their own in-house brand. Okay, so at the bottom, they actually have these ten different brands: uh, Gin Fresh, Softness, Tasty Bite, Happy Family, Big for You, Nam Ram Thai, Fruit King, Power Plus, and uh, Mat Mat Sahari, and the other one is I don't know, Jing something lah. Okay, that which is a rice. So basically, if you buy any of these brands, they are actually all in-house product of Sheng Shiong. So Sheng Shiong actually produce them. So they don't actually get the, the product from other brands and then resell it in Sheng Shiong. They, they basically uh, either they source it on, them, on themselves or they actually uh, produce and package everything on their own. So which means that all these products, they will have a higher profit margin. All right. So very interesting. I remember uh, about about five or six months ago, I think it's close to Chinese New Year. So I went to Sheng Shiong and I realized that hey, wow, suddenly I see a lot of happy family. Okay, then, then what I did is I actually went to look at the uh, I went to look at the packaging and then I saw this company called CMM. Okay, then I realized oh CMM is actually also under uh, Sheng Shiong. Okay, and that is where I realized that I, I was more captured by happy family. But I didn't realize that only after doing this research that I realized that hey, other than happy family. Uh, basically, yeah, they have quite a number of brands uh, under them. Like. Even you can see some of the fresh seafood and the frozen, uh, frozen meat uh, and all that. Uh, basically, they source from their direct supplier. So, all this will give them a higher uh, profit margin. Okay, higher profit margin. And we can see that this is what uh, is extracted from the annual report of Sheng Xiong. Okay, gross margin improved slightly from 26.1% to 27% in first quarter. Uh, so again, this is the latest one. Uh. So again, they become better. Okay, the gross margin improve again. Uh, with the gains coming mainly from increased sales of house brand, which command a higher gross margin and lower input prices you know, among different offerings. So the biggest gain came from non-fresh product as sourcing was diversified to cope with the sudden surge in demand. So we know that a lot of people suddenly go to the supermarket uh, because of the COVID. You know, so they kind of get to benefit uh, from it as well. So next, okay, how can they actually become better in, term, in terms of efficiency, how they improve the business efficiency? Okay, this is what they actually mentioned uh, that they are going to do. So we can see that the first one is, of course, to expand the store, which we're not going to focus on that. Okay, let's look at the second one, new Mandai Link Distribution Center. Okay, so uh, what they actually did is, actually, I think back in uh, 2000 and if I'm wrong, 2015 or 2016, they actually uh, bought over this uh, Mandai distribution okay which is their current hq and even for the past few years they actually has been expanding the space because they realize that they have they are running out of space so because of the business has been growing uh, very very well so another thing that they focus a lot you can see uh, on the third one is how do they improve the productivity the economies of skill okay is they continue to upgrade their computer network system including their management information system so we know that Okay, within that big HQ, okay, uh, how, how, how they actually manage the order, you know, when orders come in and how they distribute to their lorry and stuff like that. It is a very, very complex uh, process. So what they focus a lot on is to upgrade their software, okay, so much so that every information comes in and goes out is going to be a lot more efficient. So when I say that more efficient, it means that they can actually distribute, you know, uh, maybe the goods to the right place at the right time so that they can save on fewer, they can save on lower manpower uh, and stuff like that. So software actually does play a huge part in Sheng Xiong, although we don't really see it, but because of the way it is operating, uh, because as a very large uh, warehouse, they need this kind of system. So the management have been upgrading the system uh, throughout the years, okay, making sure that it becomes more better and better and better and better. Uh, any new technology in the market that can improve their system, uh, the management are more than willing to actually uh, utilize it as well. 
So that is something that we can see, you know, and that is something that I, I read after going through every single year of the annual report. And of course, as the, as the Xingxiong continue to grow, uh, they are able to get cheaper price from their supplier, okay, because uh, they are just larger and uh, people want to give them better price uh, because they, are, uh, they, are, uh, they buy in bulk. So, of course, for the last one, they increase their purchase direct from product sources to reduce the middleman expenses and reduce costs. So, of course, for the last one is, of course, like what I mentioned, they want to expand their house brand and their house brand product, uh, which they have been doing pretty well. So that will improve the efficiency. So you can see that it's not easy, but every single year they have been improving bit by bit, bit by bit, bit by bit. So that's something that we can see definitely. So one of the biggest expense in Shengxiong is actually human, okay? So you can see that the admin expense, which is uh, including all the uh, employee, the payroll, okay, increased by 18.7%, uh, mainly due to additional headcount to operate the new stores. Uh, so admin expense as a percentage of the revenue uh, is 17.4 million, which means that every single year they actually pay out 172 million for admin expense. So this is an area whereby they have been trying to cut down, okay, to make it even more efficient. All right. So I'm sure that a lot of business, we know that renter is going to be one of the key factor. Uh, then of course, manpower is going to be one of the key factor. But surprisingly, right, okay, just to share with you guys, their, hope, their renter, is only about 2.5% of the revenue. Okay, the renter is about 2.5% of their revenue. So, uh, and it has been pretty consistent. So I would say that Xingxiong has managed their renter uh, very, very well, keeping it low, all right? So their key component over here, as we can see, is actually their administrative expense, which they are trying to cut down. So how can we cut down manpower? As we know that every new Xingxiong that opens up, they are definitely going to open up uh, having more staff. Uh, they need to train more staff. And it so, also means that more lorry have to distribute because they have more places to go. So that is where, again, uh, all this system actually comes in. So they have the advanced data management capability. Uh, the main purpose over here is to reduce the time needed to pick up the inventories, to access real time on statistics, and to roll out. And of course, the last one is they actually roll out hybrid self-payment system in 2015. Okay, so this is something that I just want to touch on. I'm sure that we are all familiar when we go to Shengxiong, uh, we have to pay ourselves. No, no, uh, not we have to pay ourselves, but there will be this payment system that we actually put in the money on our own. All right. So this is what they call by a hybrid self-checkout, which means that the staff will still help you to scan all the item. But when it comes to payment, if you are using cash, you have to go to one of the machine to actually put in your money. Uh, then after that, uh, basically, the machine is will, will make sure that they pay you in the correct amount of change. So, if you are familiar with this system, right? Can you just put in a HHH to stands for hybrid? If you are familiar with this system, you have used it before. Can you just type in a HHH? Okay. Yeah. Very interesting. Okay, hybrid self checkout system. Okay, in fact, um. Just, just to share a side, side, side joke. Right? Okay, so my, 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 my mom loved this machine. Okay, because why? What you can do is, okay, this is also a hack. Right? If let's say you have a lot of coin at home, okay, what you can do is you can actually just go there. Let's say you buy an item for $5. Okay, so what happened is that there's a place for you to drop all your coins. So you can actually drop $20 worth of coin. Huh? Although you only bought a $5 item, right? You can drop $20 worth of coin. So they will actually return you $15, right? But they don't return you in coin. They actually return you dollar note. So they return you one ten dollar and one five dollars. So it's actually a way for you to actually actually convert your coins into uh, notes. Lah. So uh, yeah, maybe next time you can go and try it out if you have a lot of coin. Just buy maybe a one dollar item and you just throw all your coin inside. <laughs> and they will actually convert into 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 notes for you. So they started in 2015 and uh, you can see that in 2018, already 40 stores, uh, 47 stores is implemented and in 2019, it was fully implemented uh, across all the Shengxiong stores. So again, why I actually put in all this date, right, all this year is because we can see that the management, they actually, uh, they actually likes to implement items, okay, and they actually make sure that they deliver on it. 
Okay, so once they find that hey, this system is working well, okay, they will test it in one store, two stores, and after that they will start to implement it uh, across you know all their supermarket. And they, they, I think they are one of the first uh, supermarket that uses this kind of technology for 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 payment, right? So very interesting, very interesting. So on top of it, right, you realize that what happened is that. Uh, Xing Xiong because they had they collect a lot of cash because as as a business they 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 yeah, they collect cash lah. Okay, after selling all the product, so what they do is because they want to save on uh getting all this cash and go to the bank every single day because there there will be a cash processing fee. So they want to reduce on that. So they actually create this thing called a cash withdrawal machine. So I think this is selected stores only certain Xing Xiong store. You can actually go there and withdraw money yeah. And this works actually with DBSP, USB, OCBC, and UOB. Yeah, so it's just like an ATM machine now. You put in your ATM card, and basically you can withdraw money. So what they do is they want instead of having so much cash to bring to the bank, they actually distribute back to you, lor. Ah, uh, they distribute back to you. So if you have seen this machine, can you just put in a STM, STM? If you have seen this machine before, personally, I I have not seen this machine. Okay, yeah. So again, like selected stores. Like I think some of the bigger stores they will actually have it. So as you can see, that uh, I actually love this company because the management, although they are not that young, like, Okay, uh, three uncle. Uh, I think around sixty years old, fifty, sixty, late fifty or sixty, like. But they actually adopt a lot of uh, technology. Okay, the, they adopt a lot of technology and they think about how to make the business more efficient uh, all the time. Okay, all the time. So now let's talk about com competition. Uh. Let me see the time. Okay, we are still on time. So of course, if you look at competitor itself, we have quite a lot of competitor. Uh. So one of the biggest is of course uh, NTUC and Dairy Farm. So Dairy Farm is a holding. So they have uh, Cold Storage, they have Giant, uh, they also have 7-Eleven. And of course, uh, very recently, um, there's this so-called mini mart, uh, okay, called How Mart. Okay, if you have heard of how much can you just put in hm hm can i just take a look how many of you have heard of how much or you have actually bought things from how much before okay yep so yeah quite a number of you have actually seen them and heard of them okay hm hm yep what about what about those on facebook have you heard of how much if you have put that uh, please also put in hm hm Right, so how much later I'm actually going to share with you some of the statistics as well. Uh. They are growing very, very fast. Okay, so uh, maybe a few years back they are not really a competitor, but right now I actually put them in because they are not that small anymore. And of course, we have Prime Supermarket. Okay, Prime Supermarket. Uh, Prime Supermarket right now they have about 20 over, I think 21, 21 supermarket, and they are all 24 hours based on what they mentioned on their website. Uh, okay. 21 stores and they actually are 24 hours. And of course, right now we know that we have the e-commerce player, uh, Redmart. Okay, Redmart is actually owned by Lazada and Lazada is owned by Alibaba. Okay, so Redmart by Alibaba, huge competitor, okay, with lots of cash. You do not want to uh, fight, you know, hit on with Alibaba. And of course, Prime now is by Amazon. Okay, again, a giant in the industry. So, E-commerce in terms of grocery, they have a two huge player, Alibaba and Amazon, uh, but they are actually still uh, starting out, like I would say. Okay, but of course, in the e-commerce in Singapore, it's going to be a little bit different from a lot of countries. Why? Because Singapore is so small. Okay, if we compare it to, for example, Australia, if I want to buy grocery, I have to drive half an hour, 20 minutes. Uh, boy, your mic, your mic is... Yep. Can can hear me, can hear me. My mic disappears, is it? Are you muted? No sound. Can you hear me? Can can hear me? If you can hear me, can you put one, two, three? If you yes. can hear me. Yes. Ah, okay, okay. Good, good, good. I'm not sure what happened. Your internet connection is unstable. Okay, maybe it is my internet connection. Okay, I'm sorry for that. Yeah, but as we can see that in the e-commerce uh, area, they're actually fighting with the two giant. Uh, one is Redmart and one is Redmart by Alibaba and the other one is Amazon Prime now. Okay, but having said that, I would say that in Singapore, uh, people are actually still used to buying direct from the supermarket directly. Why? Because we are so convenient. Uh, 
uh, I think the nearest grocery store, be it NTUC, uh, Shengsheng or Dairy Farm, it should be a 5 to 10 minutes drive away for most of us. Uh, many of us, in fact, it might be even walking distance. But if we compare to countries like, for example, Australia and some other countries, they have to drive 20, 30 minutes or, or 45 minutes just to get their grocery. So if they have delivery, delivery for e-commerce, it's going to be a lot more convenient for them. So I think that is why the take-up rate for grocery in the e-commerce world, it is not that high. Later, I have the figure. Okay, but it is so far, it is still not that high yet. So that is for the competitor uh, competition. So definitely, there are competition. Uh, in fact, the management has been mentioning in the annual statement that they are aware of all the competition in the market. Uh, so what they do is they, they, they just try to make sure that they are better like, year after year. Uh, I think that's what they are focusing on, focus on themselves. Now, let's look at the management uh, because I think this is one of the key uh, criteria for me to look at this company. So very interestingly, okay, I, I used to learn this from uh, some other places. Okay, they say that in order for you to know whether the management is trustworthy or not, right? You look at their management photo. Okay, you look at uh, the way they actually write in their annual statement. If you see the annual statement, which is very, very fanciful, uh, you know, the CEO take a lot of funny photo. Uh, Machiam is a, he's a, he's a superstar, you know. Those are the company whereby you need to be a little bit careful. But if you look at this kind of photo, you know, very, very steady one. You see the hand, uh, the pattern, uh, 10 years. Okay, the left one, I think is 2012 or 2013. The right one is 2019 annual report. Okay, but in fact, every single year, like, if I had the chance to actually put it down, it looks the same. Uh. It looks the same. I wonder, is, is it even the same uh, jacket that they are wearing? Okay, but anyway, it just simply shows that the management, they are very, very down to earth. They, are very, they, they, are, they really focus on the business. They are not those fanciful ones. Okay, they are not there to give you fanciful numbers uh, to, to make it look good, but rather... They are those that just want to get things done and, 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 and stuff like that. So that is coming from the management photo. So of course, these are the key hearing advice from and observing uh, the CEO and founder of Sheng Xiong, Mr. Lim Hock Chi. So this was actually done during an interview whereby, you know, uh, they actually went down to, to, the, to the warehouse, okay, and they were actually brought around by the CEO and founder. So this is what they say uh, after the interview. Uh, they say that the CEO is somebody who actually go for value for money. Okay, somebody who go for value for money. Uh, the next one, let me just go to the next one. Uh, lead by example. And of course, the third one is nurturing the right culture. So when I talk about nurturing the right culture, basically this is what the CEO mentioned. If you don't take care of your staff, then they may end up being taken care of by other people. So uh, again, you can see that they actually take lot of care for their for the staff as well in fact we can see that recently uh, they have done relatively well because more people are going to the supermarket they make more money so they actually distribute additional one month bonus uh, for all of their staff during this period right so that is again something that we can see that they they, they really walk the talk la. they say that they care for their for their for their employee and they really do it okay from the one additional one month bonus and of course, next, okay, they also mentioned that uh, the CEO is very deeply passionate about what they do, okay? So this is what the CEO say, as a boss, you never stop. You have to bow so bow high, literally cover mountain, cover sea. You have to do everything and you have to follow through and you cannot give up halfway. So this is direct from the owner, uh, the CEO and the founder. Uh, and you have to keep making mistakes, okay? Which I definitely can see that they, they are not afraid to try. Okay, this is again mentioned. The more you do, the more mistakes you make. The less you do, the less mistakes you make. If you don't do anything, then you won't make any mistakes. And if you don't want to make any mistakes, then you don't do anything. Okay? So, but if you want to do anything, you inevitably will make mistakes. So, it's okay if you make mistakes. It means that you are doing something. So, again, when I see this, it's like, wow, okay. So, they are not afraid of making mistakes, which is why you can see that they don't mind taking up new technology. But the way they take up new technology, they do it again in a very steadily pace. They will test it on one outlet, making sure that it works, making sure that it has good feedback before they implement to implement to even uh, maybe 10, 20 outlets and before they implement to all of the different outlets. So this is what we can see uh, throughout the past 10 years. Okay, and of course, the last one is always think about how to improve. 
And we definitely can see it from the financial statement and we can see it from the yearly growth of this company. Okay, they are constantly improving bit by bit. So this is something that I just wanted to share about uh, their management. So next we come to the e-commerce part, okay. Uh, so they actually started planning for e-commerce back in 2012, all right? They started thinking about it. And in 2013, uh, they actually started this e-business project okay, in the Thompson area. So there is actually this website, which is called allforyou.sg. Uh, then uh, they offer same day delivery with a three hour delivery window. Okay. In fact, if you go to the website, it is still, uh, it is still available. I'm not sure right now how is it, but apparently it is still, uh, it is still a project. Lah. That means it is still not fully implemented yet. So I just want to check how many of you have actually used this website before. Can you just type in uh, EB, EB, e-business, okay, EB. If you have used it before, can you just type in EB so that I know. I just want to know like uh, how many of you have actually tried using it. Okay, so Rainy have used it. Okay. And what about those on Facebook? We have like 23 people, 23 of you guys on Facebook. Have anyone used EB before? Okay, so interesting. Uh, okay, I think it is, it is not widely uh, used. Okay, it is definitely not widely used. Uh, and of course, later on, I just want to touch on, uh, this is something that they mentioned. Uh, online grocery still sales accounted less than 1.2% of the total grocery market in 2016. That was based on their uh, statistic. But again, that was 2016. Uh, right now, it's 2020. So this number, of course, definitely would have grown. Okay, but as what they mentioned, it is still not a huge percentage. Okay, it's still not a huge percentage. But I think that because of this COVID, as much as more people go to the supermarket because less people go to restaurant, people at home, you have to buy your, you have to buy your, your, your items. You know, but I think the number of people who actually buy online definitely has increased during this period. Okay, I think that's something that they definitely have to put into factor uh, to account for that this number could go up to even 5 to even 10% of the total Singapore grocery market, you know, and it will continue to grow. I think definitely this is an area whereby it will continue to grow. So we can see that right now for Sheng Xiong, uh, their delivery, I think, is still not there yet. Lah. Definitely, it is still not there yet. Their e-commerce is definitely not there yet, but they are improving it. Again, they are doing a lot of testing. Okay, so this is their website. Okay, I went to take a look at their website. Uh, so first thing first, uh, does it look attractive or not? Okay, if you think that it is attractive, can you just put in 888? If you think it's not attractive, can you put a 555? Yeah, do let me know your point. Like, will you, will, you want to buy, will you want to buy it online? You know, we, I mean, right now, most of us, we go online shopping and stuff like that. So we, one of the things that uh, online shopping will definitely do is they will actually put in the featured product and they will say that, hey, this product is on sale or I know that you are looking at this product. These are some of the similar product that you might want to get also. And these are just some of the basic things that should, that appearing on all e-commerce platform. But I don't actually see them in this website. I think this is a website whereby if I just started learning a website design or website creation, I will create something like this. <laughs> okay. So definitely uh, things to improve on, uh, I would say. So interesting. Uh, okay. So I think we are coming almost to the end. Okay. But uh, this is the 2020 growth plan. I would say that moving forward, how is the company going to grow? Okay. So they are actually opening five new stores in 2020, which bring them a total of 64, excluding China. So including two China will be 66 stores in total. And again, we will continue to look for retail space in areas where our potential customer reside, but we do not have a presence nurturing the growth of our new stores and build on the momentum of improving comparable same store sales. So like I said, uh, other than build, other than opening up new stores in new areas, they also focus a lot on making sure that their existing stores are improving. Okay, as we can see from the last uh, sentence, improving comparable same store sales. So uh, this is something that Sheng Xiong has been doing. Okay, uh, and we can see that their approach is that they don't really go to big shopping mall. They like to go to the heartland area. They like to go to the HDB area, and 
uh, one of their key growth plan is that because of the because there is a lot of new areas that is being developed, the new uh, a younger crowd, especially for the younger crowd. So they are actually going into a lot of all these new HDB. Okay, so that is going to be part of their new uh, growth plan. All right, moving forward. Lah. Okay, to be in all the new HDB uh, in Singapore. So they, they, they will be pretty much in a lot of uh, void decks. Lah. So you don't see them at huge shopping mall. So that will be their current growth plan. Uh, then of course, China, uh, no news yet. Okay. Uh, they actually have plans to go into Malaysia. They did mention that they will be going into Malaysia, but subsequently, again, no news. Okay, so Malaysia so far, zero, zero news. Huh? They have opened up the company, incorporated the company, but in the end, I think probably it is not that easy for them to enter. Okay, so they didn't really go ahead into the Malaysia market. So now I just want to summarize, okay? Uh, so this is actually the... I will start with the good point and some of the not so good point before I actually share with you guys my decision. Okay, so this is actually the good point about this particular company. I will say that the management has been doing a great job to grow the business in a slow and steady pace. All right, that, that's definitely something that is amazing, amazing management. Ever since IPO, this company has got zero debt. Okay, so we, whether, the, whether is it a health crisis or whether is it uh, any other uh, financial crisis, you know, this company will, will def definitely be there. One, all right. In fact, uh, very interestingly, during the last uh, SARS crisis, the company actually do exceed exceedingly well. Okay, reason being because why? After that, right, the rental of a lot of places starts to drop because of the crisis. So they actually went in uh, to to take take over quite a number of all these places at a relatively lower uh, rate, right? So they actually benefited during crisis. So same for current uh, market crisis, uh, currently we are in a recession. So I'm pretty sure that they will be able to benefit, okay, actually from this crisis as well, okay, to take over uh, some of the stores that is not doing well, okay. Uh, and uh, the third point, okay, during the, uh, this is what I mentioned, during the last SARS, the company performed exceedingly well and managed to acquire more stores at lower rental. And of course, the last one, there is a huge potential growth in China uh, stores, okay. And uh, it will ensure that the company still has room for expansion. So definitely, I'm sure that they are looking into growing more into the China. Okay, so far, they only have two that has both have already break even, which is a good news. Okay, but definitely, I think they are having plans to open up the third one or even the fourth one. But we will see how it goes. Okay, so so far, things are still unclear about the China uh, market. But at least that whatever they have invested over there, they have made back their money. They are not in the losses. So they will start to see more profit coming from the China side as well. So these are the good points that I just want to share about this company called Shengxiong. And now we talk about the bad point, okay, the not so good point. So the first one, okay, net profit growth fall to single digit over the last few years. What do I mean by this? This company used to grow 20 over percent every single year, which means that every year they can make 20%, 20%, 20%, 20%. Okay, but for the last few years, the net profit growth is less than 10%. Sometimes like 5%, 7%, uh, 6%, you know. So we can see that in Singapore itself, the growth is starting to slow down. Okay, the growth is definitely going to, uh, starting to slow down. And it will pretty much stay below, uh, stay within the single digit, even for the next few years. So again, if they want to continue to grow even faster, they definitely have to move beyond just uh, Singapore, uh, they have to actually find ways to actually get more market share from NTUC or even uh, Dairy Farm, which is Cold Storage and Giant. Okay, next one, they would have definitely have comp competition from Amazon, which is Prime Now, as well as Alibaba, which is a Red Mart, okay, on the e-commerce grocery space. So, uh, this is something that definitely e-commerce is coming, 100%, and they are going to take up more and more percentage. Lah. And of course, they have the new competitor, uh, Haumat. Haumat has actually expanded to 45 outlets within a span of three years. Okay, so uh, yeah, I'm not sure. Some of you might not have seen Haumat before. Some of you might have seen it. Okay, but you can see that they are everywhere. So within three years, this company has expanded to 45 outlets. Uh, you can see that this is the, 
the way how much operates and the way Sheng Shiong operates is totally different. How much is just like I'm going to grow, I'm going to grow like a rocket. So they will they will grow very very fast. Okay, but Sheng Shiong is opposite. They will do it slowly and steadily. Okay, and making sure that every year I make more money. Every year I make more money. Every year I make more money. Okay. So pros and con, pros and con. But I will say that with the with the coming in of how much, it will definitely eat up some of the uh, uh, customer base as well. Mm. And uh, the last one is the dividend payout ratio actually falls from around 90% to 70%. So in the past, whatever Sheng Shiong made, they distribute 90% of the profit back to the shareholder as dividend. Okay, but over the last few years, they have reduced this dividend payout ratio to 70 over percent. Okay, so this to me, uh, again, yeah lah, as, a, as a shareholder, I, I want more dividend. Ma. So, you know, I, I find that this is, again, not something that attracts me, lah, okay, by dropping my dividend PR ratio. So, these are the few negative points about Sheng uh, Xiong. So, with that, right, okay, I actually come to almost, almost the end, lah, almost the end already. Lah. Okay, so now I just want to hear your decision based on whatever I have shared. Right now, what are you going to do? Okay, what are you guys going to do? Whether are you is it going to be a green color B U Y or is it going to be a red color B Y E? Can you just put in the chat group? Just want to hear from you guys before 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 I release uh, my answer. <laughs> okay, by B Y E B Y E. Wow. Okay, so most of you guys actually put B Y E B Y E B Y E. Jimmy say wait to buy BYE. Okay, so far only one person say the green color. No, one person say buy. Karen, Karen, okay, wow, two person. Two person say BUY, okay, two person say BUY, okay. Oh, so on Facebook, Angela say BUY also. Michael also BUY, wow. The Facebook one got different insights. The Facebook one like to buy, uh, want to buy really. But those on Zoom, uh, they, 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 they say bye-bye. <laughs> okay, so very, very interesting. Okay, so I think we have a different view for now. Okay, but let me just share my personal view for this particular company. So, okay, I just want to share that, right? This is really a very, very tough decision whether to, to, to decide to buy or not to buy uh, Sheng Xiong because I really find that this is a company that has a huge uh, potential. I like the way the management run the business. It is so stable. Okay, it is like the perfect husband that you are looking for, or the perfect wife. Okay, like maybe yeah, the perfect husband. Uh, that means you know the salary will just increase year after year. You know, and you know that you can. It is somebody that you can trust on. Uh, for the next five, ten, twenty uh, years. So I think that is also one of the reason why they actually became uh, a billionaire uh, just very recently. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to add in a few assumptions over here. I'm going to assume that this year, right, they are going to increase a 20% in revenue. Okay, 20% increase in revenue. And they are going to remain a 70% dividend payout ratio. Okay, so I'm going to forecast a dividend yield of 0 0.041 for this year, end of this year, 2020. So with that in mind, right, if I'm expecting that I'm going to collect a dividend of 0 0.041, so if I were to buy Sheng Xiong based on today price, okay, based on today's price, I'm going to get a dividend yield of 2.6%. That is already based on my forecast of 0 0.041. Right now, they are giving 0 0.036, I think, okay, 0 0.036. But I'm assuming that they are doing better and they are able to give out more dividend, uh, and even based on that forecast, the dividend yield is going to be at 2.6%. So if you ask me right now, okay, I love this company, but my final decision is BYE, okay? I will not buy this company. I will not buy this company, okay? Reason being because, okay, like I said, for those of you who are, have been following us on Telegram, there are a lot of good companies that are giving 5%, 6% dividend and their share price is there is still also a potential to make money from the capital gain from the share price. So because right now, I would say in current market, there's a lot of other opportunity that's giving me better uh, you right now. So that is why I, I'm actually skipping away Sheng Xiong. But I would say that if Sheng Xiong were to give me a 5% dividend you, okay, a 5% dividend you, 
definitely this is a company that I will definitely enter uh, without without a single uh, doubt. Okay, if Sheng Xiong is able to give me a 5% dividend yield, uh, I'm definitely going in. Or if let's say their China uh, growth is coming. Because right now, they have not released any news for the upcoming growth in China. So that is why it's hard for me to actually put in a, 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 a higher forecast. Okay, and that is why I actually remain my, my take as I will wait for dividend at 5%. Other than that, I will not go in for now. Okay, and that is basically my personal thing. Lah. That is my personal take. Uh, in fact, I think about two months back, there was a huge opportunity. The share price actually was about $1.02. Two months back, two or three months back. And right now, it's about $1.54. So we can see that the share price has shot up quite a lot lah, within two months, over 50%. Uh, within two months because of the release of the better earnings. So right now, I would say that the price is definitely not undervalued. It is, it is on a slightly higher side. But again, if you ask me, if I buy this now at 150, if I hold it for the long term, will this share price go up? I can tell you that definitely, right, this is a company that if you hold for five years, 10 years, the share price will definitely be $2, even up to even $3. So no doubt about it, okay? But right now, if I were to have the $5,000 in my bank account, whether to put into Shengxiong or put into other company, maybe I will look into other company at the current moment. And that is why I make this decision of BYE. So I hope you guys actually like today's session. Okay, you guys learned something. And so what happened is that that's the end of my session for Shengxiong. Next week, okay, I'll be talking another one Singapore company and one US company. And I will start with the next US company. So again, I will release more information about which what company I'm going to talk about. And so I hope to see you guys on my next series of Buy or Buy. I hope you guys uh, like what I'm sharing. Okay, if you like, please help me to share it with more people so that they can also benefit from this. If not, I thank everyone for coming, okay, uh, on a Sunday afternoon. And I hope you guys have a wonderful afternoon. Stay safe, invest safe. And lastly, happy Mother's Day to all mothers out there. Okay, thank you everyone. So I will see you next week. Bye-bye.